Chapter 15. I opened up the front door and led in the waiting men. Many of them greeted me with smiles and handshakes. I knew a lot of them. Maybe not by name, but I knew them. In the past couple of weeks, they'd stopped being faceless names, masks, and had started to become individuals. In little bits of conversation with them and things that Mac had told me, I'd gotten to know their stories. Everybody had a story about the path that led them down and onto the streets, and on the way down they were stripped of everything that had once been dear to them. Parents, spouses, children, jobs, houses, possessions. Despite it all, somehow against all odds, some of them had managed to hold on to their dignity. Nobody had come up with that word when Mrs. Watkins had asked for words to describe the homeless, but I saw it all the time. I let my eyes go to the end of the line looking for Jack. I hadn't seen him for a week, not since our last conversation, and I was starting to get worried because Max said he hadn't seen him either. Max stood at the counter serving the chow. Beside him were two older people, two women. They were both well-dressed, smiling, and had fancy hair. Church ladies. He wasn't in, in the line, Mac asked. He wasn't in the line, Mac asked, as he came out from behind the counter and met me partway across the dining hall. No. He might still show up tonight. Maybe, I agreed. Either way, just remember that every day is a blessing. A blessing? Are all these church ladies starting to get to you, I asked. I could do worse. I guess you could. I just wish Jack would show up. You looking for Jack? asked a man sitting at one of the tables. Yeah, I said, turning to face him. I doubt he'll be coming here tonight. Why not? He's sort of under the weather. He's not feeling good, I asked. Actually, he's not feeling much of anything, another man said. Started drinking a little early today. This whole week, the first man added. The whole week? Did that have to do with our conversation? Was I just bringing up such bad memories that he had to work harder, drink harder, to try to forget? Do you know where he is now, I asked. By the tents when I last saw him, but that was a couple hours ago. Could still be there, could be anywhere. Not likely, the second said. He wouldn't be wandering far. If he isn't by the tents, he'll be somewhere in the park. Thanks for the information. I turned to Mac. Can we talk for a minute? Don't see why not. Come on. Into the kitchen and I followed. Okay, shoot, Mac said. I was just wondering, you've been here a long time. Do you see the same people all the time, you know, year after year? Some of these guys have been coming around as long as I've been here. Some just disappear after a few days or a few weeks. What happens to them, the people you don't see anymore? I asked. Sometimes they move away to another part of the city or even another city, he said. Lots of the street people like to head out to the west coast. Weather's milder. You can live outside practically all the time out there. So they just move away, I said. Some move and some die. Mortality rate on the street, street is ten times as high as for people who live inside, Max said. So they either move away or die. Is that what you're saying? Or they get off. That's what I'm getting at. Do some get off the streets, right? Some, the lucky few. Few? So it's not a lot? Not as many as I hoped, it, hoped, but it does happen. And you've seen it, right? He nodded his head. I've seen it. Heck, I've been it. What do you mean, I asked. Where do you think I lived before I started working here? You lived on the streets? Streets, alleys, dumpsters, hostels. Although, to tell you the truth, most of the time I was living inside a bottle. You were a, a, a drunk. Although now I guess I call myself an alcoholic. But you don't drink now, do you? Not anymore. Haven't for more than a decade. But I'm still an alcoholic. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. What made you stop, I asked. I woke up one morning, face down in the gutter. Beside me was my best buddy, a guy I'd been drinking with for a long time. I gave him a shake, trying to wake him up, but he wouldn't wake up. He couldn't wake up. Dead. I knew right then that I had a choice. It was either stop drinking or stop living. I decided it was my time to try, and I did. Somehow none of us this was really a surprise. I'd had my suspicions. Strange, though, it didn't make me think less of Mac. Maybe more. To fall down was one thing, but to pull yourself back up again, that took something. Something special. So you just stopped? It's a little more complicated than that. So what did you do? How did you do it? For starters, I went to detox. I've heard about them, but I really don't know what they're all about, I said. It's a place where people can go through the symptoms of withdrawal. There is withdrawal symptoms when you stop drinking, I asked. Mac laughed. Shoot, I can laugh about it now. But there are sure some symptoms. For me, it was being violently ill, shaking, and feeling like my body was on fire. For others, it's worse. How much worse can it get than that? 
hallucinations, paranoia, seizures. And these places, these detox centers, is it hard to get into one? Not if you know the right people, and you know those people. I could arrange a detox bed in a day or two, Max said. But a detox is just one step. You're there for 10 to 14 days, enough time to allow the poison to leach out of your body. From there you go into a treatment facility. That could last at least a month, sometimes two, sometimes longer. And from there you have to get hooked into an aftercare program, something like Alcoholics Anonymous. I know about that, at least I've heard about it from the movies. You know, my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. There's a little too, more to it than that, but acknowledging you're an alcoholic is a pretty important first step along the path. Do you go to these meetings? Three times a week, it works. Matt got a thoughtful look. Is this sort of a general question or do you have somebody in mind? Jack. I figured that. I thought you might have, I said. I'm going to talk to him. Could you get him into detox? If he wanted, Max said. Did he tell you he wanted to stop drinking? No, not really. You ever heard the expression, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink? What has that got to do with anything, I asked. It means that just because you make it available to them doesn't mean they'll use it. Take it or appreciate it. If Jack wants detox, I can arrange it. If he doesn't want it, there's no point in arranging it. But there'd be no harm in ask me asking him if he wants it, I said. No harm. Just be prepared for what he might answer. When, you're, when are you going to talk to him? I was hoping for tonight, if he shows up, but it sounds like he won't. Maybe I should go and find The park isn't the best place to be, especially once it's dark. If I left right now, it wouldn't be dark, I said. You trying to help Jack or just get out of work? Maybe both. That gets me thinking. You've been here an awful lot lately. Are you getting tired of seeing me around, I asked. Just figure you must be getting mighty pretty close to the end of your hours here. Pretty close. How close? I smiled. After tonight, one more hour. One more hour? Were you figuring on just finishing and disappearing? No, I was figuring on finishing up my hours and still showing up to help. Why would you want to be doing that? It's certainly not because I want to see your smiling face. Is there any law that says I can't keep coming down here and helping just because I want to? Only law in here is me, said Mac. Into your eyes, he said, and spun me around so we were eye to eye. What was he doing? Yep, I can see it. See what, I asked. Right there in your eyes. You're high. Hi, I'm not high. I couldn't believe he was saying that to me. You're becoming addicted. I'm not, honest. I've never had more than two beers, and that was at my cousin's wedding last December. I'm not talking about al alcohol, and I'm not talking about drugs. What else is there? I was completely lost. What was he talking about? You're high on helping. What? He smiled. There's something about helping that makes you feel good. I can't figure it out if it's the most selfish or selfless thing to do. And once you start doing it, you want to keep doing it. That's why you want to keep coming back. And can I? You can come down here anytime you want, kid. Anytime. He put a hand on my shoulder. I sort of thought from the beginning that you weren't just putting in hours. Then you thought wrong. All I wanted to do was get through and get out. Maybe the first couple of times, but not after that, Max said. Look, I got too much respect for you to... Respect for me? I asked, surprised and shocked. Yeah, respect for you. Too much respect to be telling you what to do. But I'm not, sure, I'm not so sure it's the smartest thing to be going down to the park right now. I'll be careful. It's not just that. You know, you got to talk to somebody about their drinking at the right time. They say you got to wait until an alcoholic hits rock bottom. How much lower can he get than sleeping in a tent and eating from dumpsters? You'd be surprised, but it also doesn't work if he's had too much to drink, that he can't make sense of what you're saying. Understand? I guess that makes sense. Good. Now if you're determined this is what you have to do, then you better get going before it gets dark. Thanks, Mac. I'll let you know what happens. See you tomorrow.